On this new episode of the IoT Show, we'll talk about the IoT Device Certification Program. And Koshi, who owns the program, comes to tell us all the details about how the process is now fully automated for certifying your devices for Azure IoT and having them staged on the catalog that we have on our websites. Hi, everyone. This is the Internet Thing Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we're talking about device, IoT Device Certification Program. And we have Koshi from the Azure IoT Engineering Team to tell us all about this program. Koshi, thanks for joining on the show. Thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Koichi Hirao. I'm a program manager in Azure IoT team. I'm working on IoT Device Certification Program of Policies. Yeah. So we'll jump into the presentation. Mm -hmm. I think one thing very important for our audience is to understand that we create products mm -hmm. for like services mostly for connecting. IoT devices to the cloud right. and managing them remotely and eventually also bringing some of that intelligence of the cloud down to the edge. Mm -hmm. But we, pro we produce for that SDKs for devices and there's a certification process that happens for basically telling customers that these devices actually will work when they put them in production or when they try mm -hmm. them out, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about the program. How does it work? And, and let's get into your slides and demos after. Yeah, so uh, the certification program actually originally, uh, I think it started back in 2016. Okay. Um, one of the requirements for getting your device to certify is making sure your device is getting provisioned to IoT Hub using our device SDKs. And our certification program validates the connectivity from device to the cloud and okay. cloud to the devices. Mm -hmm. So it originally it was very basic, as in because Correct. the service was basic itself, it was authenticate and validate you can send a message to the Correct. cloud, basically. Right? Yes. So we recently expanded to support uh, validation against another IoT Hub primitive, such as invoking direct methods, also using device to properties as well. Okay. So so uh, these are the set of services we are we expanding mm -hmm. as well. And last year we have actually expanded to support uh, Azure IoT Edge certification as well. Okay, let's jump in there. Okay, so uh, today I am going to explain about the goal of the certification program yep, and yep. Uh, what we are intended to do, and also um, what are the set of uh, certification criteria are we moving forward? Are we going to land? Okay, so one of the goal is to make sure devices means to the solution, right? But it's an important asset of it. Right? It is. You know, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure the customers and be able to pick and choose the right set of devices mm -hmm. for particular IoT solutions. But with a peace of mind of like, hey, it's been certified, that means that it's going to work, right? Right, right. So today, our, one of our challenges, we have showcased about 800 plus certified devices on okay. the device catalog. Yeah. Uh, but the challenge is the discoverability of the right set of the devices for the particular uh, vertical usage or particular mm -hmm. use cases has been a huge challenge for us. Okay. And we we want to ease that uh, processes for the solution uh, SIs and our all of the solution partners. Okay. Okay. So one of the pro uh, a lot of principles we want to follow in terms of landing the right mm -hmm. set of certification program is we want to focus on the quality, not just the quantity. We have been bragging about hey we have about 800 plus de certified devices on the yep. catalog, but that's not enough. We want to have a higher standard of quality that we want to drive. Okay. Right. The other thing is we want to start supporting a spectrum of IoT devices, starting from little microcontrollers the uh, size of your fingernail all the way up to server type um, uh, devices that can do a lot yep. of intelligent stuff. Okay. And then the other thing is we want to make sure we align with the verticals that our Microsoft field teams focus on. We want to make sure we certify the devices that our field teams are willing to sell these devices with. It's, it's Yep. Building like a cold sale motion with the sale of uh, the but field. Does that mean that so if I'm a customer, yeah. um, I'm looking for a microcontroller running on battery, mm -hmm. and I want to use it in healthcare? Basically, I'm going to have an easier way of filtering the catalog to find exactly the set of devices that actually would be fit for these kind of scenarios? Yes. So what we are looking at is uh, we have pu uh, published a, a reference architecture document, which yep. is, I think, it's 60 pages to describe yep. the 71. optimal. Yeah, 71 optim pages 71 now. already. <laughs> so optimal reference architecture for particular use cases. Mm -hmm. What we are looking at is aligning with those uh, reference architecture to make sure we offer the right set of devices mm. for that particular use cases. Okay. Right, whether it's on a, a different uh, device type such as IoT Edge or li downstream Leaf devices. Okay, makes right. sense. The other thing is, along the way, we, we are basically want to aggregate all those assets for the devices. Yeah. We want to start recommending the right set of devices. As I mentioned, uh, reference architect, align with the reference architecture is one mm -hmm. thing. So 
you you kind yeah. of like <laughs> four steps ahead of me. <laughs> so ultimately, what we want is a matchmaking opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, through our portal, what we are looking at is using um, our better discoverability of the device, but mm -hmm. also recommending the right set of devices. Again, that leads to all those four principles, okay. right? Love it. Uh, what has been working well is that we have 800 plus devices. We have well-established documentation and processes. Mm -hmm. And we have seen a lot of uh, huge demands for the certif certified devices from both uh, downstreams and also OEM wanted to get their, their devices certified. Okay. So we believe that we have established a good branding for the certification program. But the challenge we have seen is that um, some of the certification process that we have today mm -hmm. is a manual processes, which is error prone we're not being able to establish a consistency in delivering the right set of quality in order to yeah. certify our devices. Okay. Um, the other challenge is uh, device SDK um, is something that uh, a lot of partners do value, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there are some uh, partners that do, may not use a device SDK, so we, yeah. want, we want to be able to account for that. Yeah, and, and just a quick reminder, the SDKs are open source. Correct. And, and are totally you know, transformable, modifiable, and, and adaptable yeah. to your solutions. Yeah. But as you were saying, sometimes, maybe because you just need a very like, tiny subset of the functionality of the IT Hub, mm -hmm. you might just want to go with it. Or you have an existing yep. uh, you know, code that, that you want to adapt to connect to IT Hub, and, and you want to go directly at the protocol level. Yeah. yeah. So we will continue to uh, evolve and drive and evangelize device SDK yeah. to enable ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, while we're doing so, uh, yeah. we need to account for the, the partners who not, may not be choose to Makes use sense. our device Makes SDKs. Sense. Give options to people yeah. Yeah. if they want or not and still have devices Oops. that can be certified without having the yeah. SDKs. Yeah. Right. And last, last but not least, the cost is, has been an issue, for, especially for the OEM side. There will be uh, some of the engineering burden that OEM needs to take. So um, we want to automate those processes as much okay. as possible and streamline those processes, not just uh, reducing our operational costs, mm -hmm. but also reducing OEM engineering, um, device manufacturers' engineering yeah. costs. Is it fair also to say that by automating the process of certifying devices, mm -hmm. you can ensure the freshness? So if a device has been certified like six months ago, like because there's an automation of that testing, mm -hmm. that then you can say, yes, it's still certified. It's not something that went stale because it's six months old or one year old, right? Yes. Uh, this is why we have um, we have released uh, Azure IoT certification service. This is a web-based service, mm -hmm. and that removes all those issues with the staleness of the devices or certification criteria. Because okay. the device ecosystem is evolving really rapidly in IoT, right? We yeah. need to uh, be able to not just to catch up. We don't want to be the catch-up game. We yeah. want to be like for like f five steps ahead of the game. Yeah. So this is why we chose to use a web-based services rather than building um, like a client code that talks to um, okay. I, uh, services, yeah, yeah. for example. Yeah. So we want to build a consistency mm -hmm. uh, in validation, right? Uh, we want to make sure everything, uh, all the requirements are up to date, all okay. the validations are up to date. We keep adding features. We want to keep up with that, mm -hmm. um, right? And the other thing is we like to continue to expand our tests. As I mentioned previously, we used to only certify cloud to the device, device to the cloud connectivities. Yeah. Now yeah. we're expanding to support direct method invocation and de device yeah. to methods. Um, but does that mean, and maybe you're covering that after, yeah. but does that mean that to certify a device, you have to support every single of these primitives of IT Hub? Or can you certify a device that will just do telemetry, for example? So. Um, Yes, uh, we we all there is a set of mandatory requirements, which is basically a C, D to C okay. uh, device to the Just cloud. Like minimum, right? minim, uh, yeah. minimum. All others optional because, for example, in the IoT button that we have yeah. certified recently, yeah. that button only supports D to C. Yeah, C to D is not supported. So. It, it but in some scenarios, it makes sense. You might just want correct. to send a piece of data up to yeah. the cloud and for something to And happen, that is totally right? fine. Yeah. Uh, we will be able to support that. But the thing is, we should be able to support additional capabilities such that in case a solution developers, anybody looking for yeah. a device for particular capabilities, mm -hmm. we should be able to certify against them yeah. and showcase on the device. So no bad surprise when you open the box is that, oh, it doesn't support that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. And uh, on the device catalog, uh, we are very descri descriptive about what specific capability has been validated okay. on those particular devices. Makes sense. Okay. Um, we talk about a little bit about the flexibilities. We, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, uh, 
the features come, keep piling up. We are delivering a lot of good features on yeah. um, uh, the platform level. We need to keep up with that. Yeah. Um, last but not least, we want to simplify and streamline the entire process for certification mm -hmm. uh, from a device registration to the validation and get your devices certified within hopefully like 10 to 15 minutes or so. Yeah. We, are, we are growing up. Yeah, we are growing <laughs> yeah. up. We are growing <laughs> up really fast. Exactly. That's what it is. That's, that's, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Great. So, so let's see how that works. Yep. Yep. It's going to be a very simple demo. So imagine you have a device and yep. you're looking to cert, um, certify your device. Okay. All you have to do is you, you need to submit a new device. Okay. Okay. Oops. And then you enter your device information. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so assume you have entered your device information, mm -hmm. such as your uh, device descriptions, the target verticals you're go going to, yeah. uh, some of the sales um, URL like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. describes your device pro uh, yeah. production. Uh, sorry. Uh, description and stuff, yep. right? Uh, so assume you have done that. Mm -hmm. um, you can now add an operating system to start your validation processes. Okay. This is the part of the pro flow for Azure IoT certification service. You you pick and choose what operating system you want to validate okay. against. Okay. Let's say uh, we we have a Raspberry simulator. Uh, okay. Assume we have a Raspberry simulator. Okay. You click on next. Mm -hmm. What we do is basically we have a catch all page that allows your device to get provision to AICS managed IoT hub. Okay. So previously, what device manufacturer needs to do is they need to instantiate their own IoT hub and get their devices mm -hmm. to um, provision to their hub. Yep. Right? That, that's an additional cost, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. Yep. And we want to make sure that we are the one who is on the hook for the, all those subscription costs. Yep. But not, not, not only that, we want to make, make sure we have a, um, our own managed IoT instances such that we can gather the incoming telemetry data yes, off of yeah. the devices. And, and we level set the testing environment so that not every partner that is submitting a new device has his own environment that is set up differently. So basically level set and we set the bar basically. Yes, okay. yes, that's correct. Yeah. So in this demo, uh, you can, as you can see, we are basically exposing the connection string to a managed IoT hub okay. instances. So what you do is you imagine I am a device manufacturer, mm -hmm. I'm a device developer. Uh, I take this connection strings. Okay. And so imagine this is a Raspberry Pi. This is the online simulator okay. that we have. Yep. It, it's written no, no, no JS. Mm -hmm. You take these connection strings, okay. and voila, you, your device instantly get provision to the IoT Hub. Start okay. sending the data for humidity and temperature. Okay. okay. So now, this device is now provisioned to our um, IoT Hub that okay. is managed by AICS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, moving forward. So. This is why I mentioned device to the cloud is yep. grayed out because be this, is a, yep. this is a minimum requirement, but you can pick and choose cloud to the device okay. and direct methods. Okay. This particular um, example I'm showing in the simulator does not support device twin, okay. but it does support a C2D and the direct methods. So no. I'm going to go ahead and check those boxes. Okay. Click next. And then you can configure the number of messages just for the sake of okay. time. I'll just change it to five, okay. I will say. Uh, maybe. Channel nine. Yes. Awesome. Oops, oops, sorry. Almost. Almost. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And then direct method. This is the method name that is arbitrary, like all device managers can, can pick and choose whatever yep, yep. the name. So let me go back and so figure out. Reminder like, direct method is a way for someone to call a function to execute on a device. On it a has device. a name and a set of parameters. Yes. And, and the code is implemented on the device. Yes. And will have a timeout to respond to the back end that it executed, right? Right. So in this particular um, code, uh, as you can see, on the device, it supports a method called a start yep. and stop. Right? Yep. So what I'm going to do is basically say, OK, I am going to test a start method, making okay. sure the methods has been invoked. Okay. Um, and then you, once you configure all those um, necessary parameters, mm -hmm. all you have to do is run the test. Okay. As you can see, st immediately start running the test. Mm -hmm. And you can still see, you can see that channel 9 awesome being sent from the cloud to the device. Okay. And the device starts sending the um, telemetry and humidity sensors data to the cloud. Okay. And you can see the LED is blinking, yeah. invoking because the methods. Because it started right. doing its work yes. of, of yes. sending its so telemetry based on the start command, right? OK. Yeah. Now all the test has been passed. Once you have the pass a test, you can immediately submit for certification. Mm -hmm. And we will approve that upon uh, necessary documentation, okay. additional documenting. Nice. Supports. So this entire process has been really reduced and yeah. really, really quick. 
as opposed to there's a lot of manual processes that all you need to figure out, yeah. which requires a lot of hand-holding between Microsoft and OEM. Sometimes OEM do ask, where do I download the SDK? Where's the documentation I need mm -hmm. to be looking at? How do I get my device to provision? Things like that. Um, all of these overheads are yeah. now eliminated through AICS. Okay. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Pretty yep. straightforward and easy, right? Yep. It's very easy. Yep. Yep. So uh, next step. Um, so we have AICS is already publicly announced back okay. in December last year. Yeah. So all of the incoming certification needs to go through AICS. Okay. Except Azure IoT Edge. Azure IoT Edge so, uh, still requires some of the manual processes mm -hmm. which we are working toward to, to automate automate, well. automate in yeah. the future. Yeah. Right. Um, if you have any questions. Uh, Please uh, send an email to okay. iotcert at microsoft.com for any questions about the cert, the program, or policies, any questions. Awesome. And yeah. you'll be the one answering. Yes. <laughs> and my, my, my very capable fellows. <laughs> They'll know where to find you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm a, Great. Yeah. So actually, turnkey solution for certifying your devices for Azure IoT, mm -hmm. whether they are regular devices or IoT Edge devices, IoT Edge almost automated or mm -hmm. soon to be automated. Yes. All the rest is done automatically. Thanks a lot, Koichi. That was a great demo. You guys know what you have to do. Subscribe for the IoT show and then go and submit your devices to be certified for Azure IoT. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.